Who want one last trip to the long trail? 10 things that could make Tekken 8 great. The first thing that I want to talk about, and this one's kind of obvious, so I'll make it short. Something that Tekken 8 needs to do to perfection is game modes. Very briefly in the IGN News article, Harada mentioned game modes. And he said, going into Tekken 8, we're gonna try to build upon the modes, build upon the ideas and make Tekken 8 more than what Tekken 7 was. So when we talk about what game modes will be there, I think it's it's with 100% certainty, I can say that team battle will be in the game. Now, when you talk about Tekken Force, especially a online four player co-op dungeon style Tekken Force, that one's a little bit more ambitious. I mean, it's possible looking at all the resources they're putting into Tekken 8, it's definitely possible, but that one is more of a hope, more of a dream where team battle is, is a reality. This is more so on the analytical side of Tekken, just so we can observe sort of what's happening behind the scenes with characters. In Tekken 8, what I would love for the developers to do is to release official information. We see Capcom, Street Fighter, they have a whole entire website dedicated to usage data. You can see, you know, popularity, you can see win rates, you can see everything and i wish tekken 8 would commit to this because it would give us a better understanding of what's happening but i think the reason that they don't is because it would expose how bad the pay to win dlc really is the pay to win dlc has the best win rates and they stand out above everything and also with fighting games i don't like that a lot of the endings are not canon. I know Mortal Kombat do this, Street Fighter, all of the fighting games do this, but it seems weird to me. Why would you spend so much time and effort into creating something that's not canon? I get you don't wanna spoil the next game because the ending is like the end of the chapter, but you could give us something canonical. One example that I seen someone give in a live stream is they could have gave like a lot of characters reaction to Heiachi dying in Tekken 7, the news being broadcasted around the world World. They could have gave individual character reactions to Kazuya being outed as a devil. That's the whole plot of Tekken 7 was Heiachi exposing that Kazuya is a devil. And I think it would have been cool if we saw Shahid's reaction, Yoshimitsu's reaction. One, it would have been canon, but two, it's not something that's like too encroaching on Tekken 8. Another thing that uh, Tekken 8 needs, and, and this kind of goes without saying, I see a lot of people talking about online play, netcode, uh, disconnection, desync, uh, cheats, lag, netcode, all that stuff, right? The whole entire online experience. People worry if Tekken 8 will be the same thing. And I say no, because Harada and Michael Murray, they know what happened. Even though they may say Tekken is three and all this, this weird stuff, they know how bad the problem is. And they're gonna do everything in their power to prevent that from happening again. Because Tekken 7 is the most successful Tekken of all time. And if it didn't have all these problems, just imagine how much higher it would have reached. So that is gonna be one of their biggest priorities because it is the biggest priority. Really, it's more important than character endings, game modes. If you can't play the game, then the game itself doesn't matter. And I do want to talk about this just briefly. Uh, I have a news article from Guilty Gear Strive that I just want to mention in this discussion because it kind of shows that sometimes things just go, it just get out of hand, out of control. Things just got out of hand. My ideas about what Tekken 8 should be is very reactionary to what Tekken 7 was. Tekken 7 was plagued by DLC characters, was plagued by a lack of content besides going into ranked and just spamming your most OP things possible. A lot of what I want Tekken 8 to be is what Tekken 7 was not. One thing we have to realize with Tekken 7 2 is how old the game is. This is something that I talk about quite frequently on my live streams. When this game released, it was a whole different like era of gaming. I think at the time when Tekken 7 came out, the Tekken subreddit had about 3000 people on it. 
Now the Tekken subreddit has like 150,000. So you can just see how just Tekken 8 releasing in, you know, modern day, you know, 2022, we're gonna see a lot of things that just, you know, will fix itself over time. Tekken 7 right now has a massive plugging and cheating problem. Whoever over at Bandai Namco decided that local save files was a wow. good idea, wow. that guy's a bitch. That wow. is, without a doubt, <laughs> one of the biggest fuck ups they've had in Tekken 7. People are just changing their rank, resetting their ranks, and you can't do anything about it. What Tekken 8 should focus on is when someone quits or someone plugs, you immediately have to assign the victory to the person who did not plug, right? The person who's still in the game. But also too, the, the loading, the sync, there has to be immediately sometimes when someone plugs out you will sit there for like 30 seconds a minute for your game to figure out what's happening these things have to be instant and also they have to reward the player for following the rules another thing too and i really didn't understand how big of an impact this could have on the game until i played dead or alive 5 for the first time uh, pretty much ever uh, but good AI. I always see people throw this idea around like the AI is trash in Tekken 7. And yes, it's something that I know. It's something that I can see. I can feel when I'm playing the AI. But experiencing good AI or challenging AI in Dead or Alive 5 made me realize how important it is. Because like, that's the thing, right? Tech Attack Tournament 2 did a good job in so many things. Yes, you were able to plug, but there was not like a bunch of cheats and hacks and all this stuff. And who knows, maybe if Tech Attack Tournament 2 went on for long enough, it would have happened. But that kind of stuff never happened in Tech Attack Tournament 2. So I don't know what happened with Tekken 7 to allow that. I was looking at the Tekken subreddit and I seen something here that was kind of interesting. It says the game being overly reliant on combos, they're far too long in Tekken 7. Pretty much every single character is able to carry you wall to wall on a lot of stages. Feel like a lot of matches are just waiting to see who gets launched so you can sit for a 15 second and wait for half a health combo to conclude. Uh, boring. Everyone who plays Tekken know how to do a max damage combo. People learn how to do max damage combos before they even know how to sidestep, before they even know how to punish, break a throw. So I think with Tekken 7 just going on for as long as it's had, and also dishing out a endless amounts of buffs, I wish I was able to like count how many buffs was dished out over the lifespan of Tekken 7 versus nerfs. I wish I could just look at the total because it would definitely show that they just went too heavy on buffs and not enough nerfs was dished out. You know, the combo and damage and all that stuff is a outcome of that. But also too with the tech community, anytime you nerf a character, anytime you touch a character, everyone cries and pouts. So I get why they don't do it, but at the same time, you have to do it. No one likes their character to get nerfed, but we also don't like two combos and the round is over. The only way that can be fixed is if your character gets nerfed. But also too, Tekken 7 is kind of a game built upon combos. I really wonder what Tekken 8 is going to do because they have this heat system and they're trying to change up the pacing and stuff like that. But Tekken is kind of this game where you sit around, you wait, and you uh, once you get that moment, then boom, you unleash. That's what Tekken is like. It's like... If you don't like that experience, you really should be playing like a different kind of game, you know? Another thing that's like a quality of life, I would say, is actual dialogue between characters. Seeing characters just talk to each other before the matches, during the matches, um, will just make the game feel, will make all these characters feel more connected. I think what they do with the Mishimas and like Geese Howard, like predictable, stand up, now die. You know, all that kind of stuff is like really cool. And I think um, they should try to apply that to the rest of the characters, especially when you're talking about intros. Mortal Kombat takes it too far and then they have a whole dialogue. But I think if you could find a middle spot, you could get some very interesting things. Like I wonder, what would a Yoshimitsu say in a mirror match against Yoshimitsu? Because there can only be one Yoshimitsu at a time. What would Yoshimitsu say to Asuka? Two characters who we don't even know if they ever met before. King and Yoshimitsu has been in every single tournament, yet we don't even know what they would like say to each other we don't what does the conversation look like one thing that i didn't mention in this video is balancing oh my god 
balancing throughout Tekken 7 was a nightmare. What Tekken needs to do is rotate the characters that is powerful. I know I talk about Smite all the time and you guys don't like it, but Smite is a perfect showcase of how to run a game, a online experience. They nerf characters, they buff characters, every single character gets their turn in the spotlight. Like, they'll buff a character that I like to play, and I know this character is going to be buffed for about a month, so I'm going to play and I'm going to have fun, but then that character is going to get nerfed and there's going to be another character that's buffed. Tekken 7 should do something like that to give everyone a chance to, you know, have fun. Like, yeah, this is my character's time to shine. Excitement. There has been so many characters who every single time you look at the patch notes, all there is is bug fixes. My final thing, I don't want them to listen to the community when they're complaining about random garbage. The community complains, oh, buff Gigas, buff Eddie, buff Lars, when those characters are extremely deadly online. They have to put online over what tournaments are doing. Tekken 7 was backwards. Every decision was based off of what happened in tournament. Gigas isn't powerful in tournament, let's buff him, even though we know he has the best win rate. Eddie isn't performing well in tournament, let's buff him, even though he has one of the best win rates. With Tekken 8, they just have to realize how to, one, not frustrate players, but two, do whatever, whatever it is they're trying to do. Sell DLC, bring in new players, make money, but also you can't stomp on the people who built up your game in the first place. So that's kind of what they need to figure out. But that's it. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.